Uh, so this is the filter that I've been interested in uh, in the radio that I bought, the IC230. And so I thought today I would go ahead and see if I can't to measure the, uh, the, the uh, transmission curve of this of this filter. It has some extra things. And so what I've gone, I've gone into the traces on the PC board and cut the traces. And so the filter is all by itself. And I put on uh, these little uh, uh, SMA connectors so we can, we can make direct contact to the filter itself um, and, uh, and see what it does. So yeah, should be, should be interesting. All right, I have the filter hooked up to the uh, VNA, and we can take a look at the S21 measurement, which is the transmission measurement. And let's see here, this is all the way zoomed in. Uh, so what we see is a bandpass filter. We're sweeping between 130 and 160 megahertz. And we have the cursor marker turned on. And so the center is at about 145 megahertz. So 144 megahertz, in the US, we go from 144 to 148. So 144 is actually right in the middle. And 148 is over here where it's about to die. So um, I'm not sure why they include all the way down to 140. So the, the bandwidth of this thing is 140 to 148. Um, so I don't know if that covers um, some type of world coverage and not just US, so I'm not quite sure about that. Maybe my viewers know. But um, it is quite lossy, even, even when it's transmitting in the center, it's at like minus 20, 28. So it's certainly not a 50 ohm uh, device. No, it's probably a high, a high ohm device. So I wouldn't pay too much attention to the Y axis other than uh, relative measurements. So it's, it's probably, you know, a, a few ki kilo ohms or something. Uh, it's it's on the receive side of the uh, of the radio, but it does give me the shape. I was I was interested in the shape, and uh, it has some uh, uh, poles and zeros in it. Uh, it is a, a helical resonant cavity, is what they say in the literature. Uh, so yeah, there you go. Okay, quick uh, quick video for the day. Um, uh, I had higher hopes for, for this thing, but it does, I guess it does what it does. Um, I might someday reach in and, and tweak these and see if I can't, uh, I can't narrow the, uh, the resonance of it, but it's probably not designed to do that. I'll probably just try to just mess it up, uh, but it might be a fun thing to play with. Um, it, it also should function uh, all by itself. It certainly has a, a FET input and FET output, so uh, I might just leave it alone. Maybe I'll use it sometime. All right, so the next module I wanted to take a look like is the IF module. This brings in 10.7 uh, megahertz and down converts it to 455 kilohertz. There's a oscillator here running at, I can barely read it, uh, 10.0245, and that down converts it into the 455 range. And then this is a 455 uh, kilohertz filter, real nice one in a metal can here, ceramic filter. So I, I've uh, added on my little test ports here and uh, I'll take it over to the VNA and sweep the S21 and uh, let's, uh, let's see how this one does. All right, so you can see here that it has about a 24 kilohertz uh, bandwidth and it looks uh, very sharp. Uh, looks like a, looks like a, a high, high quality uh, filter with lots of uh, poles in it, so.